Hello there. Many learners of English tend to have a few problems with the pronunciation of English consonants. And those problems tend to concentrate around three areas. And I'd like to uh, explain about those three areas in this video. Now, uh, a word of warning, uh, not all learners will have problems in all of those areas. It depends mainly on what your mother tongue is. The areas that I want to have a look at are aspiration, voiced endings and th and th. So if we start off with aspiration. Uh, aspiration is the fact that in English when we say p, t or k we accompany that with a kind of extra puff of air. For instance, if you have words such as pick or two or cat, you can't just say pick or do or cat. That will immediately give you away as someone who is struggling with English pronunciation. Now it should be pick, as if you add an extra h sound or two or cat. Now this aspiration, that's what it's called, is fairly strong most of the time. The rule says that it's at its strongest at the beginning of a stressed syllable, but really at the beginning of almost any kind of syllable you will have some kind of aspiration. Now beginning of a syllable doesn't necessarily mean the beginning of a word. Sometimes uh, you have words such as report. The p only comes at the beginning of the second syllable, but that happens to be a stressed syllable also, so very strong aspiration. Report or internal or become. Now this aspiration with p, t and k occurs practically always. There's only one real exception to that and that is in the combination with the sound s. So when we say speak, all of a sudden there is no aspiration with p. You shouldn't say speak or you shouldn't say steak. No, it's steak, it's speak, it's scared. Not scared, but scared. So that's a, an exception and an exception that always uh, is valid. So combination s, p, s, t, s, k, no aspiration at all. The second problematic area that I would like to have a look at are the so-called voiced endings. In contrast with many other languages, in English you can have voiced stops and fricatives at the end of a word. I'm talking about sounds such as b, d, g, v, z, th. In many languages they tend to be devoiced and you only have endings in t and p and k and so on. Uh, in English, for instance, you have words such as end. End ends in a d. Or words. Words ends in d. That's voiced. Or have or is. Dogs. Behaves. With. They all end in voiced sounds, voiced consonants. Um, Sometimes you may feel that that is just difficult to pronounce, but it's really just a matter of getting used to it. Now, uh, a word of warning also, it's not a fully realized voiced sound that you have at the ends of words. So for instance, you wouldn't say word. It's not a real d at the end there. It's just a slight, slightly pronounced d word word, but it's definitely not a t, it's definitely not word, so word. Now with stops, 
B, D, G, it's fairly simple because normally the spelling will tell you that you need to have a voiced sound there. Yeah. Think of a word such as land. Well, there's a D there in spelling also. So, you know, we have to keep that D there. Or hub, that's a B at the end of the word. Or blog, that ends in a G. Uh, as soon as it comes to fricatives, though, um, we don't immediately have that warning in the spelling. Very often, a word that ends in a, a letter S can either be uh, pronounced as S or Z. It depends on the word. It's this clear s, but it's is with a z. Both are spelled s. How can you know? Well, there are no rules really. It's just something you'll have to learn by listening to English. Or the same goes with the letter f. Sometimes, such as in the word if, it's just a f. But in of, it's a v. Again, you can't know. Uh, the same goes also with the th combination. Uh, sometimes it'll be th, both, or sometimes it'll actually be a voiced sound. With ends in th, not th. With plurals, you can have a rule to follow. Uh, the plural s. The pronunciation of that depends on the preceding sound. So, for instance, if you have cat ends in a t, which is voiceless, then the plural will also end in a voiceless sound, cats. Whereas dog, g, ends in a g, which is a voiced sound, well, then the plural will also end in a voiced sound, dogs. Book ends in a voiceless sound, so books. Politician ends in a voiced sound, n, so it's politicians. The third problematic area uh, concerning consonants for many learners of English are the sounds th and th. In many languages, those sounds simply do not occur and as such, it's automatically uh, a bit of a difficulty to get used to those sounds. Uh, an extra problem with uh, th and th is that the spelling will give no indication at all as to whether it's a voiceless sound, th, or a voiced sound, th. Now, first of all, uh, a number of learners tend to replace these sounds with, for instance, a t and d, or s and z, or f and v. Please do not do that. Uh, English has th and th as sounds, so if you're serious about learning English, then you should also go the whole way and also try to learn how to pronounce th and th properly. How do you produce a th or th? Well, it's actually fairly simple. All you need to do is to put the tip of your tongue in between your upper and lower front teeth. Make sure that the tip just protrudes slightly and then breathe out and you will automatically get th or th if you also activate your vocal cords at the same time. If you feel that's still difficult, just start by sticking your tongue out a bit further and say th, th or th. And then you can slowly retract your tongue until just the tip of your tongue is visible. 
it's just a matter of practice. And please rest assured it's worth your while to try to get these sounds right because they do make a difference. In English there are differences that only rely on uh, the difference between th or the and another sound. For instance, take a tree and then the figure three. Three trees, that's two different sounds. Three trees. It's not three trees, it's three trees. Or the difference between tick and thick. The difference between those and those. Or between oat and oath. It does make a difference. Now, looking back at those three problematic areas, aspiration, voiced endings and th and the, I can assure you if you can pay attention to these three areas, then the pronunciation of your consonants in English will improve to no end. Good luck with your pronunciation. Practice makes perfect. I'll see you. Bye.